happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day and um, welcome to the live streaming of Black Flag, a play by Idris Goodwin. I'm going to start with a reading of the guiding principles of Barrington Stage Company. We acknowledge that we are gathering on the ancestral homelands of the Mohican people, despite tremendous hardship in being forced from here. Today, their community resides in Wisconsin and it is known as the Stockbridge Muncie community. We pay honor and respect to them and their ancestors as we commit to building a more inclusive and equitable space for all. Barrington Stage Company recognizes that we are a predominantly white institution that has historically benefited from systemic racism. We commit to anti-racism and anti-oppression throughout our organization. Black Lives Matter. We accept the responsibility to fight to end racial inequities in our theater and our industry. Barrington Stage Company is committed to a workplace free of discrimination on the basis of race, color, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, national origin, religion, age, or disability. Our work seeks to celebrate all members of our community and amplify the marginalized voices who are often silenced. It is our responsibility to prioritize and protect from discrimination and oppression those who make our work possible. We stand in solidarity against bigotry and racism. We hold our artists, staff, board, audience members, volunteers, and donors accountable to these principles. And now I'd like to introduce Sharon Fraser McLean, who's the producer. Good evening and welcome. My name is Sharon Fraser McLean, and I'm the Community Engagement and EDI Coordinator here at Barrington Stage Company. Also, as Jane said, the producer of Black Flag by Idris Goodwin. I first would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to this viewing tonight in celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And thank you for meeting us in this space of awareness and learning. In alignment with one of the goals of our Black Voices Matter initiative, my hope is that this piece not only houses a space for our BIPOC community members to be heard and understood, but also creates a space of learning and understanding of one's views, history, and experiences. Please stick around after the viewing for a live talk back with the director, Mel Powers, and the cast, where you, the audience, can utilize the chat box to interact with us. Questions are encouraged. Without further delay, I present to you Black Flag. Black Flag, a short one by Idris Goodwin. Sydney enters a spare dorm room with boxes and bags. She begins unpacking. One, fall semester, late August. Eventually, Deja enters with boxes and bags. Hi. <laughs> they hug. Finally, in the flesh. I know. Uh, I'm so used to your Facebook picture, and now here you are. It's so good to finally meet you. Yes. So, are you ready for this? Can't wait. Okay, Rumi. First things first. Uh, you mind if I take this side? It just felt right to me. All yours. We can always switch after Christmas break. I mean, winter recess. <laughs> you can say Christmas break here. You got any more stuff? I can help. Nah, I thought I'd start like going to be hitting mom up for them care packages on the regular. Oh, my mom sent me with everything. Really? Oh, yeah. I got jars of peaches. I got peanut brittle. I got moon pies. Lord, no. Keep all that away from me. Oh, you mean these? Yes, I mean those. You don't like these? Sydney. This? right here. I damn you. <laughs> so you're going to the mixer? Yeah. You? I don't know. Oh, come on. You gotta come. I won't know anybody there. But won't you meet people? Isn't that the point? 
Sydney has unveiled her Confederate flag wall hanging. I guess your mama really did pack everything for you. Oh, she wants to make sure I don't forget. Says, don't you get lost out there? She's, uh, she's got a lot of pride. <laughs> a lot of pride? It's where I come from, you know? It's okay, right? I mean, I know it's a little, you know, Southern girl, rebel flag, but I don't know, you, you seem like a rebel to me. Your side of the room. Um, would you mind giving me a hand? Uh, you know what? Actually, I think I... She manages on her own. Hey, uh, I saw they have soft serve in that cafeteria. Want to come down with me? Um, I got a lot of stuff here. Oh, okay. You have my number, so text me if you change your mind and want to meet up. Yeah, um, do that. All right. Sydney exits. Blackout. Lights up. Deja enters and immediately some senses something ain't kosher. Two. Fall semester, November. That's mine. It was under my bed. But it's mine. Well, I thought it was something of mine. Well, it's not, so you didn't read it, did you? You shouldn't have read this. Once you saw that it wasn't something of yours, you shouldn't have read it. Well, I did, so. She says we have to write about what we're feeling and what's on our mind and we gotta be honest. So this is what you really think? You really shouldn't have read it. It's so secretive that you read it to your entire class and your professor. Come on, Sydney. Didn't you ever think for a second, maybe just maybe I might be uncomfortable by this? But I don't mean it like that, like, like in a... It's your side of the room. You have the right to have whatever you want on your wall. You said it assaults you. This cross burning its Confederate history into my nightmares. Deja, you don't think I'm like one of those dumb redneck assholes you read about or, or see on... I never called you a dumb redneck. You have the poem in your hands. I never said anything about you. This poem is called To My Roommate. It wasn't to you, to you. It was a free write. And in a free write, you're supposed to just let all the thoughts fall out of your brain. She says, don't censor, and I didn't. I just didn't realize that when I put it up, I, I didn't even think of it as something that could be a problem for you. Of course you didn't. I, I don't mean it as, it represents, you know, my home, my culture, the good things though. I don't mean it like. It's whatever, okay? Your side of the room. I don't want you to be uncomfortable. I said it's whatever. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Last one. It's all good. You have it. Blackout. Harry and Deja burst into the room, each holding red cups, stumbly, tipsy, making out. They fall into bed. They fumble. One of the red cups spills. Lights on. <laughs> Harry sees the flag. Oh. Yeah. Three. Fall semester, December. Is that? Yeah. My roommate's from the South, and she has a lot of pride. Was this up when you moved in? She actually asked me to help her put it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Really? Yep. No. Yep. 
first day, she pulled it out of her bag and hung it up. Ironically? It's her side of the room. She can put up whatever, as long as it's not, like, gory stuff or porn. So, it doesn't bother you? Okay. They start to make out again, but... Look, I know how it looks. Yeah, it looks kind of racist. Her mother gave it to her so she wouldn't forget, you know, where she came from. Ah, so she didn't want her to get lost out here with all these weirdos and godless heathens. Now, honey, when you get out there, don't go fraternizing with them homos and A-rabs. Stop. You can bring this up to the school, you know. Tell them you want a different room. I'm for real. Hmm. I thought of that at first, but... But... It's not... This is going to sound like I'm trying to make a pun, but it's not so black and white. I see one thing, she sees something else. It's not clear cut. I see slavery, obviously, but she sees her mama and just like being country and Southern. You know, you see this flag on like country albums and bell buckles and what was that TV show with the car? I don't know. My grandpa was always watching it, something with a car. I, I don't know. She sees like country pride in a real generic way. It just means I'm from the South. Where they used to enslave African-Americans. You are too much. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't wanna. I just got here, you know, it's my first year of college. I worked my ass off and it's hard enough just trying to, I mean, can't I just go to my classes and parties and just, do I have to start a whole thing just because I see something different on her side of the room? I don't like it. I don't. But I don't like a lot of things I see and hear from white folks. No. No, I, I feel you. But. 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 You're always with that. Why do you even care? You ain't black. Well, Deja, for starters, um, I hate slavery. You sure it's not some prejudice against Southerners? Based on a bunch of stereotypes? You just assume they're all racist and want slavery back. That's not fair. No, no, but... A flag is just colors and fabric. The meaning changes depending on, like, who's holding it and who's looking at it. I just got here, and I got to make it through the first year, and then I can try and get reassigned for some other arbitrary-ass reason. But no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be the Black girl, the angry Black girl who started some shit over a flag, especially if the girl who put up the flag is this sweet bubbly girl who's just trying to stay connected to home. Uh-uh. It's going to start a whole thing. People are going to be all over Yik Yak and Facebook and putting my picture all over the internet, giving their opinions and... No. No. You've given this a lot of thought. The brochure ain't saying nothing about this. The Boys of Hazard. What? The show. The, the show that you were on. Oh, no. It was Hazard. 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 Dukes? Dukes of Hazard. Right. Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Asia just looks at him. He grins back. Doughy eyes. Dumb grins. Sexual energy returns. But alas, moment broken, a drunk Sydney bursts in. Oops, she tries to back out and closes the door on her own foot. She falls over laughing. Lisa, Sydney? I'm so, so sorry, Deja. I didn't know you were studying. Who's this, Deja? I'm Harry. I'm so sorry. Sydney, what have you been drinking? Just iced tea. Just iced tea? It's from just up the ways, this wonderful place they call Long Island. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, Harry. I think I might have to. No, 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 it's all right. no, 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 you two. No, I don't no. want to mess Why things I just up. I just came to you. Uh, Come on, just lay down. I can also just. Um, um, should really. I'm okay. You might want to get a bucket. What'd you say? Herman? 
Harry. What'd you say? I don't, but what did I say? Sydney. Something about a bucket. Yeah, you just look pretty messed up. Um, maybe you don't know me, but Sydney Blanchard does not puke. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Okay, uh, Deja, I'll call you. Um, hey, hey, no, 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 don't go. I didn't mean to interrupt. Look, I want you to. She goes for both their hands. Come here, damn it. She makes them hold hands. There. <laughs> Lovely. She gives them both a hug. She kisses Deja on the forehead. Ah, oh, I remember what I came for. She grabs a jar of peaches. Bye, y'all. Bye. Harry. What the hell accent was that supposed to be? I wasn't doing an accent. No? Sounded like you were trying to parrot me. He wasn't, Sid. I know what a fake Southern accent sounds like. See, because I come from Georgia. And when we say bye, we say it like how I just said it. Bye. But you said it like you were from Texas or something. You said bye. See the difference? Thank you. Okay, Sydney. Bye, girl. Oh, wait. I'm so sorry. Y'all want one of these peaches? No. No, Sydney. Suit yourself. Mmm. Little taste of home right there. Yeah, you got your home all over this place. Peaches and your flag. Stop it. What's that, Harry? Now she remembers my name. We're gonna go too. Let's all just get out of this room. No, I think I wanna stay right here, here with you and Harry in my room. With your flag. Yeah, and and your flag. This is a shirt. But it's a flag. And you're walking it around everywhere on your shirt. California bearable, all up in everybody's face. Mine lives right here in my space, in my private space. Calm down. I don't like this guy, Deja. This guy is, he's a, Sid. You can do better than this idiot. <laughs> is that right, idiot? Don't call me an idiot, you drunk. Stop it. Both of you, stop it. Calling me an idiot? At least I ain't racist. <laughs> you don't even know me. You don't even know me. I know what this is. <sighs> Sydney, maybe you just want to calm down. He wasn't- <laughs> Oh, don't give me that, Deja. You're the first one who started this crap. Don't yell at her. You are the one You're who turning so everyone against me, making me out to be some kind of racist. I'm not. My best friend in high school was black, and my track coach was black. You are a racist. Black. You a have racist? a racist You're the mentality. one talking about that race. That is what you have. Ugh! I'm not a racist. Sydney suddenly gets sick. Dry heaves. Deja and Harry just look on concerned. And sure enough, Sydney vomits peaches. Mm. Blackout. Lights up. Four. Spring semester, early January. Over the break, the winter recess, my whole family, cousins and aunties, we meet up in uh, Stone Mountain Park, just outside Atlanta. We have this tradition, you know, uh, day after Christmas, we always go up there, have a picnic, catch up with each other. It's real nice, trees, lots of land, and of course, big old plantation house and a museum about the plantation house where they tell you the stories about the old times, how things used to be. And then there's Stone Mountain. There's an actual Stone Mountain right there staring down at you and chiseled into the side, it's got like, all the Civil War guys, Jefferson and Stonewall and Robert E. We grew up hearing about these guys like they're saints our whole lives. And uh, you know, I mean, really my family is not. Anyway, so we're at the park and there's this other family. Really, there's a lot of families out there that day, but there's this one that I keep overhearing. Two guys, really. And one of them says that it was right there on that stone mountain was where the clan 
they jump started the clan there. Like the second coming, they met there on Stone Mountain. They don't share that fact with you in the old plantation museum. <laughs> and these guys were talking about action, how these guys weren't afraid to act and how Dylan Roof, the South Carolina shooter, they were saying how they thought he was just a mixed up kid. And they don't agree with murder, but didn't he have some balls? He wasn't afraid to take some action. Oh my God. Yeah. And I just wanted to walk over there and say a million things to them, but I, I was, look, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, Deja, and pretend like a lot of these so-called liberal kids here do, but I, I've heard shit like it before. But what really, really hit me, they started complaining about how after Roof killed those people, they took the flag down. Your flag. Yes, this flag. They took it down in South Carolina. And these guys kept saying, they better not try and do that here in Georgia, that big eared some bitch Obama better not try and take my flag. And it just kept going from there. Uh, and I swear, Deja, I thought about you. And that night with that Harry. He's not so bad. Whatever. I, I know you guys are booed up now, but I thought about what happened here in this room and, and that poem you wrote, how you wrote its arms blocking off history from evolving past its scars. My mama gave me this so I wouldn't forget her and how she raised me, but now when I see it, all I see is those guys talking about Dylan Roof and taking action and God, Deja, it's time. It's got to come down. Your flag right here. Yes. Good. But can you help me? How? Help me take it down. Help you take it down or take it down for you? I know you don't want this here. Every day you gotta be thinking, ugh, I just wanna yank that damn thing. Sydney. And I get it now. Sydney? Do it, take it down, it's okay with me. But it's not okay with me. But I... Wait, wait, just listen. I don't want to take your flag down for you. See, if I take it down, then the story is it came down because you have a Black roommate because your Black roommate was uncomfortable. But it should make you uncomfortable too. It should make anybody uncomfortable. I want you to want to take your flag down. I want those guys in Stone Mountain Park to want to take it down. I want... Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> it has to be you. Sydney faces the flag. Can't move. Why can't I bring myself to move? Why does it hurt when I try? It's like you told me. It's where you come from. It's pride. Deja touches her shoulder, exits. Sydney just looks at the flag, trying to move. Lights out. End of play. Never meaning no harm. Be 
It's all you never saw Been in trouble with the law Since the day they was born Straightening the curves Flattening the hills Someday the mountain might get them But the law never will Making the way That's just a little bit more than the normal life. Just a good old boy. They wouldn't change if they could. Fighting the system like a two modern day Robin Hood. So at this time, we will begin our talk back. First, I would like to allow the cast a moment just to give your name and a brief introduction of who you are and what you do. Uh, I can start. Um, my name's Caroline. I use she, her pronouns. I played Sydney um, and I'm an actor from Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Olivia Enda. I play Denisha, also she, her pronouns. Um, graduate of Pittsfield High School, grew up in the Berkshires, currently um, a senior elementary education major at Howard University in Washington, DC. And I'm Noah Eisenberg. I played Harry, use he, him pronouns. Um, I am currently living in New York, and I did Barrington's Musical Theater Conservatory in 2019. Um, yeah, here we are. Did you want me to introduce myself, Sean? I was about to say <laughs> last, but definitely not least, Mel Powers. Hi, I'm Mel Powers. I directed this wonderful, amazing cast. Um, I live in North Adams and New York City, and I'm very happy to be working with Sharon and Barrington Stage on their Black Voices Matter initiative. Thank you. So we're just going to go ahead and dive into these questions. Um, and just a reminder to those who are watching, please utilize the chat box if you have any questions for the cast or the director. So my first question is from Mel. Mel, I love how you always take the time to educate our cast on the content of the play. Taking time to make sure that everyone understands the history behind the content. Can you please share a little bit about your process when directing these plays? Yes, yeah, Shan, thank you. Um, so right now I enjoy uh, parallel careers as uh, an artist and as an uh, equity and belonging specialty specialist. And so um, my artistry informs my equity and belonging work and my equity and belonging work informs my artistry. And so I feel very lucky to be able to work in that way. So when we start rehearsals on these projects, the first thing we do is we assume that everyone is coming from a different place and that, um, that we don't all have the same information. So we spend a lot of time actually going um, deep into sort of like dramaturgy and watching videos and creating a common language and a common understanding of the work. And so we did that. We spent a, a lot of time our first rehearsal looking at videos and just talking about things and trying to create a space where people felt like they could be vulnerable and, and share because these topics can create a lot of feelings in people. Um, and so that was how we started the work and they you know, just jumped in beautifully and filled in the rest. Thank you, Mel. So my next question is for the cast. Can you please share your initial reactions to the script when you first read it and decided to audition? Just so you guys know, you can pop in like popcorn. <laughs> I'll go ahead. Um, I definitely was really excited, um, specifically because 
according to the script. I was only assumed the role of Deja amongst um, this production. Um, and just how she portrayed herself was very much different from me. So I kind of knew it was going to be a challenge, um, but excited to kind of take it on and introduce myself to these perspectives and um, overall just step into something new in a territory that wasn't familiar. So I'm glad I was able to do that with all of you who are very supportive and educational and just an overall um, very uh, educational and interesting experience. <laughs> I can speak a little bit about um, my first sort of reaction to reading the play. Um, I spoke a little bit about this. I remember in my audition on on Zoom with Mel and Sharon, um, uh, I went to Williams College and I went there from the fall of 2016 to the spring of 2020, which almost perfectly lined up with the Trump administration. So um, when I arrived on campus as a freshman, like everybody was really excited about a Clinton presidency. and I think, you know, people had their own hunches about what they thought was going to happen, but um, very quickly, whatever reality we had constructed, you know, crashed down um, in November of 2016. And my college years lined up with the changes that the Trump administration brought. And so um, like difficult and like messy um learning for a lot of white folks in college is something that um, really resonated with me reading the script and having gone to college when I did. Um, I mean, anytime, you know, you meet this like new crop of people, like you're going to, your knowledge is going to interact with other people's knowledge in a way that, you know, nobody can expect. And um, this is just a great, uh, a great little like sneak peek into moments that happen um, every day at, at colleges and, you know, other, uh, like educational institutions and just where young people are meeting each other. So uh, I really saw that moment like crystallized in, you know, like 20 pages, which is what I really loved about the play. Yeah. And then for me, I, I was very jolted and excited when I read it because of how many intricate moments that have completely overarching themes there are in this play. Like, it touches on so many different issues of how we as young people deal with issues of race, both on a massive level, obviously with the Confederate flag of the overarching big bad, but also in the little microaggressions that we see thrown in or the ways where they have those awkward moments where they don't know how to handle what they're doing or don't know how to move forward because they, don't, they aren't speaking the same language of where they come from. So I was very excited to dive into that kind of work of finding those intricacies and dealing with that, I guess. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your honesty and transparency and what it truly meant to you. Um, my next question is from Mel. So Mel, what are some of the themes that you recognize in this piece? Yeah, you know, the big theme we talked about and worked with was this idea of space, right? And who gets to take up space and how do people take up space? And so there's the literal space of their of their dorm room where this flag is hanging there and is, uh, you know, a fourth character in the play. And, you know, if I had had my druthers and like a budget of like a million dollars, you know, the flag would have started small and slowly gotten bigger until it actually filled, you know, the space of the screen, because that's what it felt like for, for Deja, right? That she didn't even have the psychological space to feel comfort in her own home. Um, the space talking about Stone Mountain and how it is a space that's revered in, in one, in one uh, domain. Uh, but, you know, we looked at a video about it and talked about there's there are people who there are black people who live at the base of that mountain. And every day they look up and literally it's so huge and it takes up their physical and psychological space. So that was um, a big part of it. And then also you have a character like Harry coming in and he's taking up that space of wanting to be the ally, you know, which he was. But he was also taking up a space that Deja didn't feel empowered to take up, right? So it's it's been that was like the the real thing that we talked about. And then even in our rehearsal period, you know, how were we taking up space on Zoom? 
um, whose voice was being heard, how are we holding that? Um, it was really, it was really one of my favorite things that I've explored in this cast. It was just, I can't say enough how proud I am of them. It was so great. Thank you, Mel. So my next question is for Caroline. Caroline, many will say that Sydney was wrong for wanting to hang up her flag. What are your thoughts? Um, I think, I mean, so th thinking about, you know, our main themes that Mel uh, weaved into the rehearsal process of like public and private space. Um, Sydney is like flexing so much privilege by not only like hanging the flag, but th maybe knowing in some part of her brain that she, that it would ruffle a few feathers and proceeding any, anyway, you know, so obviously like, I, I think that she shouldn't have hung it, <laughs> but I also think that, um, this is one of those like unfortunate moments where Sydney's first layer of learning was not like other white people coming to collect her. It had to be, it was like running straight into Deja's face um, as a roommate because uh, for Sydney, it was just private, but for Deja, it was something totally different. So um, I think obviously, you know, like, white people in America by now should have the context that they need to make these decisions about um, uh, how their, you know, views on, on heritage affect other people and what they actually mean in the real life um, world. Uh, but yeah, I just think it's, it's tough that uh, Sydney had to make that learning moment happen at Deja's expense um because there are moments like this and you know like great like if Sydney learned her lesson like fine and maybe perhaps if we like interviewed these characters six months later Sydney would be really grateful and appreciative that she had Deja there to like help her through that but at the end of the day like you know it it could have and should have happened on her own so yeah those are my thoughts on that Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, my next question is for Olivia. So Olivia, as a black woman, how would you have handled the hanging of the flag? Do you agree with how Deja handled it or would you have done something different? Hmm. So initially, like I completely understood why Deja took the route that she did. Specifically, you know, being a freshman from Detroit, a black girl who clearly is in a new space um, that she is a minority in for sure. Um, so like, you know, taking that safe route and trying to like brush it off and be buddy buddy with the person that you're sleeping with, um, quite literally taking the safe route. Um, but I certainly would have um, essentially like considered uh, the way that it could have all had a far more detrimental um, outcome if, you know, the roommate situation wasn't how it was. So I certainly would have, as Deja, had those conversations with her that I was having with Noah, um, you know, like being a little bit more honest and open and kind of going through my emotions with her rather than kind of like having the um, outward of it all like come, come, coming at her in a way and then in the moment kind of reveling and understanding how I felt truly when I was at like basically my breaking point. Um, so I would have allowed myself to certainly sit down and just be honest rather than kind of beating around the bush and trying to be buddy buddy and trying to be friends because you know at the end of the day not everyone is going to be your friend and specifically uh, when you don't necessarily agree on something and from the beginning we can see that Deja does not agree even if she doesn't know it like it's you know so all in all no I would have not done it the way that Deja did but I completely understand why she did. <laughs> Absolutely understandable. Thank you for sharing that. So I have a question for you, Noah. Harry was a great example of what an ally looks like. What are your thoughts on Harry's reaction of the situation? Yeah. Um, I have a little bit of mixed feelings on it because, yes, he did do something amazing by actually stepping in and trying to protect his friend, especially when it was a moment of vulnerability for her and one that 
Yeah, but at the end of the day, Deja had also point blank asked him not to get involved because she didn't want him to make into a bigger deal than it already was for her as she was facing so many of the actual challenges of having to deal with this and her having the foresight to see what would happen if she made it into a big deal or at least could happen. Um, so it really was towing the line of, is he actually helping her or is he, like Mel said, taking up his own space and using privilege and taking over a situation that wasn't necessarily his to take over, especially to that level of quite literally screaming at the roommate. Um, so I, I would not have handled it that way, um, but I love that he tried to at least do something. It's just about finding the balance of how are you actually listening to the people that are being harmed and following their lead versus just charging in at full force like the bull. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate you for highlighting that. You know, as an ally, again, remembering to allow the person you are assisting to have control over the situation. So I thank you for bringing that up. Um, Mel, there's a question for you in the chat. So someone who has been a part of the series of all the Idris Goodwin plays wants to know what makes Black Flag different from the other plays you directed? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, so for those of you who haven't had a chance to see um, all the plays, Idris Goodwin made, I think it's five plays available um, royalty free because he wanted these topics to be discussed and people to be able to present it and to really talk about it. And so this is the fifth play we filmed, but our last play we're actually gonna show in a few weeks. And so we started a year ago with a play called Hashtag Matters and it was about a young black woman and a young white man who had grown up together and they kind of talked about the issue of like, you know, the hashtag matters and what it means from their different perspectives. But then the other three plays in the series are actually plays um, that feature solely black people and it's black people talking to one another and sort of sorting through, you know, aspects of black life in some way. There's one about Juneteenth. There's one about um, uh, how to talk to your kid about, you know, water guns, basically. That's the one coming up. And then there's uh, there's one more, another one with a, uh, oh, a bunch of a parent and a child. So this one returns to this idea about interracial dialogue and, um, you know, the ways that we hear and mishear and miscommunicate with one another. And so what I just really loved is the characters in this piece are all at an age when, as Caroline said, they're trying to figure out what it means to be in the world and how to be in the world. And it was really important as we sort of pieced through this um, that Caroline's character in particular was not just this villain, right? Because there's a way that you look at it and you can play her to be very heavily like overtly racist on, on purpose. But it was really important to sort of highlight the ways in which many people who consider themselves to be good people um, in this dialogue where, you know, there are white people who consider themselves to be really good and yet still have a hard time actually hearing what everyone else is saying to them. And I thought that was really powerful. Um, and I thought the three of them really played off of each other very well with that. So that's what made this one different for me, especially in this moment in time that we are in. Um, I mean, it's always, we're always in this moment in time in, in some way, but as we continue to move through where we are, um, I found it really relevant to 2021, 2022. Absolutely, thank you, Mel. Um, my next question is for the cast and you guys can just jump in. Um, what are your major takeaways from this piece? I did not know Stone Mountain Park existed. Um, I think, for me, I like have spent, you know, being in college, I've been in sort of like a pretty liberal space um, for the past few years. And so to do this piece and learn about this like ginormous, you know, monument. And I, I really appreciated the audience being able to see a photo of it at, at the sort of end credits part uh, of the piece, because it's like this huge physical presence of a history of racism and you know like systematic oppression and slavery of, of people um who are now 
still living there. It just like absolutely blew my mind. And so there's that material like nugget in my mind that now I know this thing exists, but it's also the reminder of like how many other things like baked into the ground that we walk on every day are as big as Stone Mountain Park and like who knows about them and who doesn't know about them and like how who carries that um like you just never know <laughs> so that was uh a really um like enlightening for me to get out of the piece and it's definitely something that I'll take with me as I go into the world Um, for me, um, definitely kind of playing on what you had just mentioned, um, but it was very educational in terms of like what more I got out of it, despite just reading through the script, you know, just kind of like reflecting on how I choose to handle situations in kind of like this bubble I've created going to an HBCU and um, realizing growing all, all up also in a fairly liberal environment that that is not what the world really is and understanding that. And even when um, we are acting and putting myself into this space, it's like, it's real, it's relevant. And it's something that is happening far more than I allow myself to think about. Um, but in saying so, it definitely should be something I think about far more and how I take on my perspectives and how I go about various conversations with people who may or may not um, be like-minded as me. Um, so yeah, just really, uh, again, grateful for having this space to not only learn and grow, but be conscientious of my own perspective. Amazing. Noah? Yeah. Um, I just really appreciate what how this show is so applicable to our everyday lives in conflict resolution of people that are not the exact same as you. It, it speaks to how many different ways you can handle a situation and also shows you right there in front of you what to do and what not to do. How, if we really just empathize and talk about it or instead of coming in like the bull or kind of skirting it away, a lot of these problems can be solved or at least move the needle forward instead of allowing things to stay as they are, which nobody wants, or anyone unfortunately getting hurt. So I really appreciated that we, as a cast and crew, were able to totally dissect this piece and really look at like who is doing what wrong when and why. Absolutely, absolutely. So cast, while I still have your attention, um, I just wanna ask one more question of you. Um, and that question is, if you had the ability to speak to your character, what is a valuable piece of advice you would give them? And Caroline, if you don't mind starting. I think um, I would tell Sydney to just like meaningfully put herself in Deja's shoes because I think she has all of the pieces of information about the flag that she needs to understand uh, why someone would be offended, um, which I think is the case a lot of the time when, you know, you sort of have to like, you know, like teach a white person something about uh, racial dynamics in the US. Like many times you have the information, it's just like plugging in one more plug to make them see. And often that plug like Noah was mentioning is empathy um, to just like meaningfully set aside her own emotional associations. Um, you know, like forget about her private versus public space and just think about Deja's as it relates to her. So I think that's what I'd tell her. How about you, Olivia? I would definitely tell Deja that she knows who she is. She seems to have um, at least somewhat of a solid sense of identity and understanding um, who she is in realms of like society. And I would just tell her to like really embrace that because I feel like that's what caused a lot of the delay and insecurities is like, where do I fit in here as me? 
So I would just, you know, tell her to like, you know, embrace who you are. You are a beautiful black girl and speak up on behalf of who you know you are. I would start with namely pipe down. You're not the morality police. It's not your job to snipe in on every little last thing. It's you are still a white person who has a long way to go. Yes, you might be a little bit more woke or educated than certain people around the country, but we as white people have a lot of in inherently ingrained racist tendencies that he is still working through just as everybody is right now. And just focus on taking the back seat and learning and learn how to help people and how to get involved before jumping the gun. Thank you. And our next two questions are for you, Mel. So we have two questions in the chat. The first one says, as an EDI expert, what advice would you give the characters? Mm, that's a good question. I like what they all said. Um, I think that I would go a little further in saying that the character of Sydney, um, I think unfortunately a lot of times what happens is that people feel like, I will say right now, a lot of times white people feel like um, it's a zero sum game in terms of if you get this, that means I get less of that, right? So there's this way that if you, if I don't put up my flag, then then you've gotten your way and I've lost something, uh, as opposed to really sort of stepping back and saying, you know, is the end goal for us both to feel like we belong in this space? And so I'm actually going to be losing if I put something up that makes you feel uncomfortable, right? To value the relationship. Um, would be where I would start with her, <laughs> but then she needs a whole lot of education that it, it's also not Deja's job to do. And so I would say that it was interesting about this piece because Deja, Deja names that self-care piece when she's like, why do I have to do all this? I'm just here, I'm just trying to get an education. I don't wanna be on TikTok and Yip Yap or whatever else she said. I don't wanna be that girl, right? But I would say to her to find her people, to find her support system, um, to know who she can reach out to um, and, and to really find that. And everything Noah said about Harry, about wanting to be an ally is wonderful, but then how are you doing that thing where you're taking up all the space and making it about you, right? So to really be an ally in a way that supports, um, you know, the person who's being targeted in this way. And then I'd go to the school and I'd say, what are you all doing? You have an issue here. You all need to help resolve this. It is not Deja's job to do that. So that would be my that would be my recommendations. Thank you, Mel. And there's another question in the chat for you. So it says, I keep seeing images of the Nazi swastika flag. Did the cast make that connection? Um, I see Noah nodding. I don't think that's something we specifically spoke about. Noah, can you talk to that? We did a little bit. Um, more so in comparison to how the certain parts of the South still um, put the pedestal to old time ways and con the Confederacy, whereas in comparison to Nazi Germany, where they were after their war and they lost, they wouldn't allow any like Nazi memorabilia, et cetera. It was all condemned and imprisoned versus where we are today in America, where we're still seeing that be celebrated a little bit. So we didn't talk about it in the distinct side by side, but the two issues did come up as somewhat comparable and the ways that they were handled. That's right. We went deep in rehearsal. Thanks, Noah. Yes, thank you, Noah. So my last question before we wrap up um, is for all of you actually, um, has this piece inspired you moving forward? If so, please share. Oh, if I can jump in. <laughs> I'll go. I'll just say that I so love having the conversation um, especially with younger people. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna start teaching a class at NYU in the undergrad uh, drama division 
um, in a few weeks that is about resiliency and belonging and all of these things we're talking about here and how to um, have artists go forward you know, and understand the collaborative nature and all of the things we're talking about, like microaggressions, how can you create in a space if you don't feel like you belong? What does it take to make those spaces? And so, um, you know, I, I think the kind of work that we did in this is the kind of work I love to do and I wanna do moving forward. And so my uh, my artists who collaborated with me are gonna stay with me and, and their dedication to that work. Go ahead. <laughs> um, just really in terms again on the educational factor of um, always learning more. There's always so much more you can dive into um, again on just like the various perspectives and quite literally physical things that um, can bring a presence and kind of resonate with you, um, me in particular. Uh, so just kind of um, motivating me to uh, really recognize again the power of my voice and moving forward continue to use it um, to my best of my ability but also not bearing on that burden of having to be an educator in every space but knowing how to um, comfortably involve myself in spaces i'm really grateful um to have gotten to work on this project for its larger themes but also in the context that it's being done. So like, I didn't know Olivia before this project. And we both, you know, we grew up in the same area. We went to the two high schools in Pittsfield. And so it's really cool that we got the chance to work together on this project. And it's just, um, yeah, it really like means a lot to do this play that's so big and so small at the same time um, with a, you know, a company like Barrington Stage that I've worked with as a local actor in the Berkshires for years. And um, it like, you know, it, it has reminded me, especially as like, you know, virtual theater continues to be one of the safest options that these moments, these like sparks can still spark. Like you just need like a great play, um, and like really talented artists and, you know, all of those same, uh, moments can ignite no matter how and in what context. So that was really motivating to see. And for me, similar to Mel, I really loved the exploration that we did in rehearsal. And I want to find more spaces like that to really take major real world issues, whether it be anti-racism or homophobia or anti-Semitism, et cetera, and really dive into them. Because I so appreciated that kind of work where we're really doing the dramaturgy and giving the work its full do instead of just, okay, we're going to rehearsal now. Here are your objectives. Here are your this, that, and the other, but really taking the real world issue in. I mean, theater, it's the part theater and anti-racism almost go hand in hand because it's the application of these issues in real time where you can explore them on something that is already concrete. And it's, it was just an absolute blast and I want to find a way to do more of it. Amazing. So at this time, I just want to give you all a round of applause for all of the hard work that you've done. Um, we wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Um, at this time, I would like to send a special thank you to our artistic director, Julianne Boyd, who believed in the vision of the initiative. Um, so at this time, we just want to thank her. Um, Jane O'Leary, director of education, not only is our tech person, but she is very instrumental in the Black Voices Matter initiative. Um, we also want to thank all of the staff at Barrington Stage who help and support this initiative, our marketing department, our development department, because as you know, this work is not free. So we thank you for all of your hard work, all of our sponsors and all of our donors. Um, I don't want to forget anyone. Um, just everyone who's involved. Thank you to our local community too. We thank you, the audience, for coming out and partaking in this um, live streaming because all of this would be in vain if we didn't have an audience. You know, we just want to create more spaces to have these conversations. So as Mel mentioned earlier, we have one more play in our series, and that play is called Water Gun Song, and we will be streaming that soon. So please be on the lookout for the information um, for that play. And um, we just thank you all for spending a little time with us, and happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day, everyone. Good night. Thank you for joining us.
Black Flag, a short one by Idris Goodwin.